Matthew. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, good. I'm glad to see you. Um, so first off, before we talk about anything else, I know that you uh, have some things that you would like to clear up. There are things that have been in the press in the last year and a half that I really did not know about, honestly, until I had a briefing this morning with the producers. Mm -hmm. And so I guess a lot of people know about it, but I didn't know about it. But you'd like to clear it up. Yeah, I mean, there's been um, some negative things written about me, said about me in the last year. There's uh, a woman in there was Cleveland a, who... a woman in Cleveland who uh, claims that I, that I hit her. Um, hit her where? I think she specifically says that I hit her in private areas of her body, actually. Okay. And where was this? Uh, this was in Cleveland. I was making this film there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's been a very tough year for, for myself and my family. I mean, it's, it's difficult to be accused of something that you did not do. I've never hit a woman in my life. Never have, never will. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a part of who I am as a man. And I, and I hold that very dear to how I define my character. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been been very difficult. Um, so, so what what did happen? Why was I mean? Who was? Did you know the woman? Uh, no, I was actually sucker punched in the face by a man, and I retaliated against the man that sucker punched me in the face. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a, a fight broke out, and she was a woman that was in proximity to that, and she decided that she was going to write uh, a different version of events that happened that night and try to extort money from me to mm -hmm. to. Uh, that was what went down, and it went into uh, first a criminal case, because she alleged that I that I hit her. Mm -hmm. um, the prosecutors in Cleveland took about six seconds to see that it was a hoax and mm -hmm. threw that out. Mm -hmm. But then it moved into a civil case, and um, we had to depose witnesses and find the truth, and that took uh, quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's in the past, and the case was dismissed, and. Uh, now I can finally speak my side of the story for the first time. Why didn't you go right away and, and why are you now talking about it versus like right away saying? Well, I mean, when you're involved in a criminal and a civil case, it's, mm -hmm. you're advised not to speak about these mm -hmm. things, you know, because they're trying to find the truth and depose right. witnesses. Okay. And, and I also find that it's just a little bit uh, undignified to come out and respond to people's allegations that are so outlandish mm -hmm. with just a one person is saying you did this and you mm -hmm. come back and say no I didn't. Right. Uh, I was gonna let the courts uh, you know, resolve it on that end. Mm -hmm. And then I knew that there would be a time down the road where I got an opportunity to, to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, But there have been some things that were true that, that you've learned lessons from. You got a DUI, is that this correct? This I actually did do. You got a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> and w where was, uh, yes. where was I, that? I got a DUI in uh, Bend, Oregon where I live now, very mm -hmm. happily. Um, not the DUI, happily no, live. No, no, yeah, yes, I, I happily you, live in You didn't in happily Bend. get a DUI. I was not happy about the DUI no. at all, and I, I was terribly embarrassed by that. Um, and take full responsibility for it. I mean, I, I really own that and uh, have done every single thing that the state of Oregon requires for a first-time DUI offender. I've learned a ton. I did four weeks of um, alcohol informational uh, training mm -hmm. and just learned an enormous amount. One of the statistics that I learned was that 50% um, of people who get one DUI will get another. And I found that pretty astounding after what I've been through, that I will absolutely not be in that statistic. There's just no way. You I will mean, never I... drink and drive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No. It will, it will yeah. be my policy to never get behind the wheel of a yeah. car after even one drink. Yeah. And you know, I, I really, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, sort of some, I just learned a lot about for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Wyoming, and not to make excuses for myself in any way. In fact, I think I'm even being harder on myself for that. I grew up in a place where you had to drive 60 miles to go to town and, and hang out with your friends. So from a very early age, that's just what we did. And I lost friends in high school who were drinking and driving and, and had accidents on the highway. So I should have really, I should have known better, and yet I did that off and on throughout yeah. my life. Fortunately, didn't hurt anybody, and then learned this lesson. So um, it'll never happen again. Well, it's I, good that you learned the lesson. That's the most important thing. Thank you. And silly, so many people do it. They think just one drink, it's okay. Yeah.